I was enraged.、Mm-hmm. I, I felt like a burning anger. I was a bona fide God hater, but specifically Jesus.、Uh-huh. I hated the name of Jesus. I couldn't stand anybody talking about Jesus.、Um, I wouldn't let Christians touch me. Pray for me. I couldn't go shopping in stores that were playing Christian music. Couldn't stand it. And it would just, this like burning fire in my chest would just ignite. I just didn't want anything to do with it. It was just like an utter hatred that I had towards God and specifically Jesus. But all of a sudden you're not happy anymore. And so you go to church. <laughs> Whatever I tell you, it's really going to be meaningless to you unless you search and read the Bible and study for yourself with. An attitude of humility because I do think that. Started your testimony. Huh? Started your testimony. Oh, yeah. Dad, the sound is not very good. Dad, the sound is not very good. Yeah, I was wondering why Karen was in the room. Oh, they're going to go.、Uh... Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so excited. Okay, all right. Oops, I can't tap my microphone. <laughs> <clears throat> Alrighty. Yeah. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for checking out this、uh, video today. I'm interviewing a really awesome friend, Evan Martinez. The Bible says that Christians, the followers of Jesus, overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. That is by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the word of their testimony. And they do not live their lives even unto death. Now, Evan has an amazing testimony. We met, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago and went on some hikes and、uh, with a group of friends. And I just have to say, it's amazing to be around you. You're just, you know, you have this peace and joy that you share with others and you're fun to be around. And、uh, yeah, I just, Love that about you, but I came to know a little bit about your testimony. It's pretty amazing.、Yeah. And so, first of all, Evan, thank you so much for giving me some of your precious time.、Oh, amen, yeah. And for being willing to share your testimony with my friends on YouTube. Yeah, no problem. You got it. I'm happy to be here. Thank、oh, you. Thank you. So, you are today a committed follower of Jesus. You love your Bible. You can see your Bible's all marked up, and, you know, it's very used up. <laughs> yeah. And、um, when we're around you, we feel peace and love and joy and love for Jesus, love for the Bible. But that was not always like that in your life. There was actually a moment when you really despised Christianity and everything that has to do with Christ. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? How was your childhood, your teenage years? Your youth, how did you come to that point in your life where you really hated Jesus and what you understood to be the message of Jesus? Okay. So,、um, yeah, I was born in Tulare, not too far from here.、Um, I spent my first few years there with my parents. And,、um, and then somewhere between the ages of about five to 12,、um, I lived with my, my dad and my stepmom.、Um, childhood was rough. Uh, there was a lot of,、uh, abuse and things like that.、Um, when I became a teenager, I went out of control a little bit, just was doing my own thing,、um, and got into every kind of trouble a teenager can get into.、Mm-hmm. Um, I was pregnant when I was 16, had a baby just a couple of days before I turned 17. So I was a mom really young, really early,、um, and just started doing things on my own at that point. Um, my first, like, contact, relationship, understanding,、um, of Jesus came during those,、um, the younger years when I was with the,、uh, my dad and my stepmom. And the person that was actually abusing me was a church member. So, so that was my stepmom. Wow. And, um, she, she was the secretary of the church.、Mm. So my first contact with Christianity was, um, An understanding of the great hypocrisy that could be in there. Yeah, yeah.、Um, but still, even at that point, at that young age, I knew that it was the person that was not conducting themselves in a Christ like manner. So I didn't like turn around and blame God and think、right. that was like a God. Yeah,、thing. that distinction. Yeah. Saying, okay, this is what she's doing. Doesn't mean that this is what God wants her、right. to do. Right. I knew that was a misrepresentation of. 
Christianity or God, you know, um, as far as having like a personal relationship with the Lord at that point, um, you know, I went to the, the youth stuff and, um, and participated and had fun, you know, I enjoyed the social aspect of it, but I wouldn't say that I remember, you know, actually developing a relationship with God at that point. It was just, um, something that I did Mm -hmm. and I, I guess I was kind of neutral about it. I didn't blame God for everything that was going on. Um, I also didn't lean on him necessarily, you know, um, to get through that, that period of my life. Um, so where the hatred came in to answer your question, um, towards God, um, was more so in my early Mm twenties after I had been out in the world on my own, you know, for, since I was 16, 17 years old, um, and was trying to do everything my way. And there was a specific instance where a Christian woman had come along and helped me. Mm -hmm. And I had broken down on the side of the road like three times that day. There was something going on with my vehicle. And this church lady and her kids came along in her mom van and said, um, hey, you know, can we help you? Can we get you some gas or whatever? And I said, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, I'll let you do that for me. Do your good deed of the day. It was like, you know, it was church day. I could tell. And they were in their church vest and all that stuff. So I knew she was demonstrating an act of kindness um, in front of her children or whatever. So I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so um, they helped me out. And that was actually the first time that I broke down that day, you know, my vehicle. And so I ended up breaking down again and again a third time. And I just remember reflecting on the woman yeah. and her prayer for me. Yeah. And um, I remember when they had asked, when the woman asked, like, hey, can we pray for you after they did their good deed for me or whatever? Um, I said, yeah, sure. You know, I'll let you pray for me. So we got in a little circle and held hands and she prayed. And I just rem- remember her asking for God's will in my life. And so... Um, Later on that day, I determined that it was God's will that I have a horrible day (laughs) (laughs) right? because my vehicle kept breaking down. Uh, uh, And um, the long story short was my vehicle ended up getting stolen at the end of the day. Oh, no. (laughs) Yes. So I completely blamed God. I blamed the woman. I blamed the fact that she called out to Jesus on my behalf. Um, And so I that was actually the turning point wow. where I started to wow. hate God. <laughs> wow. So here's a Christian woman thinking she's yeah. doing the best thing in yeah. her life, just yeah. helping a total stranger uh-huh. and praying for God's will in your life. And then that same day, your vehicle gets stolen. <laughs> yeah, it, it broke down two more times. Oh. It got it got stolen the third time that it broke down. Wow. Um, now, truth be told, I was living a... Um, a terrible life. <laughs> you were. Yeah. Um, so... You know, in retrospect, now looking back, I know that that was the beginning of the end. So what do you mean that was the beginning of the end? Was that the beginning of the end in terms of your feelings towards God? That was the beginning of the end of the lifestyle that I had been living for so many years. Oh. Yeah. So that, you know... I. I wouldn't have phrased it this way at the time, but now looking back, um, that lifestyle of just complete depravity and sin and just doing everything. And was that all throughout your teenage years and young adult or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. From Mm -hmm. teenage up to, you know, that point in, um, in my adulthood where I was just completely rebellious and angry and doing everything my own way, Mm -hmm. um, having no respect for authority or government or parents or people or anything. There was just like a rebellious spirit. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah. And so I would have continued down that path if I had the choice, (laughs) but because things just started to go so bad for me, my vehicle had just gotten stolen. Um, I ended up getting evicted. So it just like everything just started falling apart after that contact with that Christian woman, her prayer. And I just knew it. I just knew it. And I blamed her. (laughs) I blamed her in her (laughs) prayer and the fact that she touched me and prayed with me for me, whatever. Um, you know, I, did you have a sense that God was doing something? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's why you didn't like it. I didn't like it. No, I knew that this was a result. I I knew for a fact Mm -hmm. that this was a result of that woman's prayer. My life just went. Wow. Wow. 
in straight shambles. And and not to say that it was in, in any kind of good condition, mm -hmm. but it was going as I had been carrying it along. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it wasn't until that day that lady prayed for me that it just went down so fast and everything just fell apart. And so I had to do something different. Yeah. I couldn't just continue living the life that I had been living. Wow. So you have this perception that that woman's prayer kind of allowed God to start working in your life. Yes. But terrible things were happening. Yes. And you were feeling it and you were not happy, but you knew something had to change. So what did you do? I didn't necessarily think things had to change. I was fine with the way they were going. Like I didn't have any personal dilemmas about right. like my life or how I was living it. Right. Um, I just knew that all of a sudden they were changing. Mm -hmm. So that I had just come to the end of the road there. And I mean, you know, talk about sin and illegal activity and rebellion and all that stuff. Like my whole life got turned upside down. Like I could no longer, um, have that source of income. I could no longer live the life I was living in the house that I was living. It's, you know, there's so many details <laughs> that I, that I could include that I won't. Um, so but was that fueling like bad feelings toward God? I was, I was enraged. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like a burning anger, um, because my way was no longer permitted to continue. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with the way I was living. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. <laughs> yeah. um, and I knew that her prayer and her calling out to Jesus, particularly, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so after that happened, um, and I knew my life had to change. And these and th these things came up that made it impossible for me to continue, to continue as you were. traveling down the road I was traveling down. Um, a lot of things in my life changed, mm -hmm. um, but my heart didn't. You know, I, I it grew harder and um, more angry. And now it was specifically angry at Jesus. Mm. I, not, I was a bona fide God hater, but specifically Jesus. Uh -huh. I hated the name of Jesus. I couldn't stand anybody talking about Jesus. Um, I wouldn't let Christians touch me, pray for me, like hands off. I didn't want anything to do with Christians. Um, I couldn't go shopping in stores that were playing Christian music. Wow. It was like nails on a chalkboard in my ears. Like I just, I couldn't stand it. And it would just, this like burning fire in my chest would just ignite if I would hear anyone talking about the Bible, talking about Jesus, playing Christian music, I just didn't want anything to do with it. It was just like an utter hatred that I had towards God and specifically Jesus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So before that hatred part, before the prayer of that woman, yes. what was your general view on Christianity? Okay, so um, Christianity or any religion at all, I thought it was just a means of control. Okay. Um, I thought that Jesus was the adult version of Santa Claus and that this was some made up fairy tale that right. we were told, right. um, you know, he's always watching you. Mm -hmm. You're going to get, um, you know, rewarded at the end if you do good. And um, that it was just a means of keeping people in line. Right. So I didn't think that it was real. It was just... I thought it was a control mechanism. Yeah, absolutely. Imposed by society or by some people in society yeah. just to get the crowds to do what they to want. To behave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get people to behave. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I didn't think that there was good or bad or right or wrong. I believed in relativism. I thought that everything was relative. Um, I didn't think that murder was wrong. I wow. Think, yeah. No, I didn't think that murder Killing was people was... No it's all relative. Okay. You know, yeah. sometimes that's something you got to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it just depends, you know. I'm glad I, I was not your friend back then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, I, I especially am ha I'm happy I was not your enemy. But, right, yeah, more so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't think that, um, you know, murder, adultery, uh, lying, stealing. Um, that was all good. 
I mean, there was it was no, not good or bad. It was just it, it, it was life. relative. Yeah, it was relative to yeah. the situation. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, so yeah, there there was no right or wrong mm. sin mm. or you know righteousness <laughs> or any anything like that. It was just all, you know, what I want to do. That's good. Yeah. Um, what I don't want to do. That's bad. Right. If someone's doing something to me that I want them to do, you know, that's good. And if that's something I don't want them to be doing, then that's bad. So it was all relative to me and where I'm at in the universe and what it is that I want to dictate in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there was there was no good, bad, mm -hmm. right or wrong. It was all completely relative. That's super interesting. And so y you go from having a stance on religion that is neutral but even actually more, you just thought it was a control mechanism. It was nothing really good. You didn't have strong feelings against it. But now because of the prayer of this woman and because you see that something is definitely happening, mm -hmm. you now start hating God, yeah. hating Jesus, hating Christian music, just, you know, being not happy with Christian people around you. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Yeah. So I, I mean, it was like that. I went from, eh, this is just something that people made up to control, you know, the masses and whatever. And then all of a sudden this lady prays for me and it's suddenly real. <laughs> <laughs> right. All of a sudden I'm like, it's very oh, real. Very oh, real. Oh, this is, this is real. Yeah. And I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. You, you actually said that you felt that you had to stop some of the things you were doing and you had to change your lifestyle, but you, you were not happy with that. No, it was like someone threw a monkey wrench in my life and I, I, I didn't want it to stop. So like you had to change certain things externally, but your heart was really like, yeah, no, I don't want this. Right. I was, I was forced to make those changes. Mm. I felt like, mm. you know, like it was, the extenuating circumstances that made me stop doing what I was doing. I would have continued if I could have, but like I said, my vehicle just got stolen. All of a sudden I was getting evicted. I needed to find a new place to live, a new mode of transportation, new source of income. Like everything just all of a sudden was just upside down. Wow. And so, yeah, I, I had to get my act together in a different way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so what happened? So, so I did, um, because I had to, not because I wanted to. Um, and I did end up putting my life together, um, in a more legal way, <laughs> um, a more like, um, law abiding citizen type of form. Um, and eventually I had you know, a couple years down the road, um, I stopped all the illegal activity that I was involved with. I got um, a real job, um, a legitimate place to live and a different car. Um, and everything was was good. So yeah, I had the, the car that I wanted. I had the house that I wanted. I had the boyfriend that I wanted. I had the job that I wanted. Um, but, but it wasn't, it, my life still wasn't good you know something was missing absolutely yeah yeah that captures it perfectly something was missing um i had everything that i my all my checklist was accomplished you know of what should give me a happy life yeah um but i wasn't content there was something missing there was like a hole in my soul that couldn't be filled with anything you know i had changed my life you know um and like I said, everything was above board mm -hmm. and it just, I was not content. Yeah. It so, was still something missing. So what did you do then? So I, I said, you know what? Um, I think I need to go to church. That was my, <laughs> that was my solution. So go from, to church. For, so let me get this straight. You go from this point in your oh, life yeah. that first you're like, okay, religion is just like fairy tale. It's just to control people. Yeah. And then a woman prays for you. Yeah. You start seeing all things happening in your life, kind of almost forcing you to change your lifestyle. And, and then you start hating God because of that. You hate Jesus. 
And then you kind of get your act together. You have a house, you have a boyfriend that you love, you have all the things, you have a job. And, but all of a sudden you're not happy anymore. And so you go to church. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I think I need to go to church. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, <laughs> so I, so that's what I did. Yeah. So I went to church. Um, I found a church that um, placed a lot of importance on reading the Bible. Okay. And that's good. Yeah. That's very good. And so that's what I did. I started reading the Bible. Um, I wanted to know that Jesus uh -huh. <laughs> that ruined my life. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't think I liked him, but I knew he was real. I knew he had there was power in that name, you uh -huh. know. Um, and and I knew I needed to learn more about Jesus. You know, I'm just hearing your your story. I mean, I heard already before, and and but hearing your story, I really have this sensation, this this strong feeling or or knowledge, knowing what I know of God and the Bible and Christianity. I really have this strong feeling that God was just fighting for you. You know, that <laughs> Jesus was just like, I want you. I love you so much. I'm not going to give up on you. You know. Yeah. Do you feel that? Absolutely. Yeah, I do. And so what happened next? You just started going to church? I just started reading the Bible. I want to know more about Jesus. This Jesus that you were indifferent to, you hated, but now you kind of feel you need him. Exactly. And yeah. so, okay, from there. So I just started reading the Bible. Um, you know, yes, I was attending church. Yes, I was hanging around church people. Mm -hmm. um, and I was watching sermons online and all that, you know, but it, nothing changed my heart, my life, my everything, like opening up that word wow. and reading it. Wow. Yeah. Hey, man, that's so powerful. Like searching it, you know, with my own hands yes. and eyes yes. and trying to understand what this story is about, you know? Yes. Even today, people sometimes comment on my videos, say, oh, do you have any evidence for what you're saying? And I normally say, well, I, I do think there's a lot of evidence. But I, whatever I tell you, it's really going to be meaningless to you unless you search and read the Bible and study for yourself with an attitude of humility. Because I do think that for what you described to me, you had to come to a point in your life where you wanted it in a certain way for God to really give it to you. Because before you were like just, you know, that proud woman that Philip just, Christ. you know. Everything was my way. I knew everything there was to know about. I mean, I had it figured out, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I knew how the world worked. I knew how people worked. I yeah. knew, you know, yeah. I had it all figured out. And right. it was just a matter of me putting the pieces where I wanted them to go. Right. To get my life to be how I wanted it to be. Yeah. I was in complete control of my life. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't asking anybody for help or advice mm -hmm. or anything else. Amen. So. Well. <laughs> Amazing. The more that I that I read the word and came to understand what it was saying, um, who was behind it, and I had my worldview challenged mm -hmm. so often. Mm -hmm. You know, love your enemies, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pray for those who persecute you. You know, it, and it was just those every opportunity that I had to see where the word of God differed from my point of view and how I thought the world should be, um, I got to make a decision. You know, do I want to keep living and believing the way that I do, or am I willing to let go a little bit right. and surrender right. and go, you know what, this is not how I want to handle the situation, mm -hmm. but I know that I am supposed to love my enemies, or I am not supposed to behave this way, or I should, um, you know, go the extra mile, mm. you know. So anywhere that the Lord just started to show me how to apply the word to, yeah. you know, not just to read it mm -hmm. and to know mm -hmm. it or about it, but to actually be changed by it and make those day-to-day -day decisions, just little small ones, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, wasn't, yeah. it, it wasn't like an overnight thing where mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I'm a Christian now, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just surrendered little by little by little by little and let the word change me change my heart change the way i thought of things yeah. just yeah. acted in faith and yeah. you know what i don't i don't want to do this mm -hmm. or i don't mm -hmm. um you know necessarily personally agree with this but i'm going to just go ahead and behave accordingly mm. um 
and and believe what the word of God says. And it's just it's amazing how your heart can be transformed and changed and softened. Like, you know, if you've ever met anyone with a heart of stone, it, it was me. Yeah. You know, my heart yeah. was so, so hard. Yeah. And that was something that I was proud of. Mm-hmm. You know, being hard hearted. Mm-hmm. I thought that was like an admirable quality. Right. Um, being you hard. thought that was being strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The harder my heart was, the yeah. stronger I was, yeah. the more independent, the more powerful, the more that pride got, you know, puffed up. Because biblically, there's strength in humility, there's strength in meekness, there's strength in love and kindness and goodness. And for <laughs> you, that was just like, the nope, opposite. that's just, that's weakness for me, right? Yeah. Yeah, having a sharp tongue and um, being cold-hearted and not caring about other people. That was, those were, I don't know, it's like, I really feel like there was a point in my life too where I really saw myself and my character for what it was Mm -hmm. and all the things that I thought were good about me that I had been working on (laughs) to be more hard and tough and strong and independent and proudful. And, um, you know, at some point God showed me like, that's not his character at all. It's the complete opposite. Right. So I really had to count it all as loss and go, all right, I guess I have to start from scratch. All these things that I've been strengthening and building and growing, I need to throw it in the trash because that's not, yeah. That's not the character of Christ at all. And if I want to be Christ-like, then I, I got to start over. Basically, God had to break you to now make you or to rebuild you, mm-hmm. to create you, to make you anew. Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way. And it was really, it was really scary, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, humbling for sure. Because like I said, I felt like, like I lost everything, you know? And like personally, um, and I just started out like even like my my sense of humor. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I imagine it was very different back then. It was totally different. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was mean and it was um, sarcastic yeah. and dry and just um, just nasty, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. just really hateful. I would just get the the biggest kick out of just the mm-hmm. meanest things, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so to lose like to lose that, um, and also like just the things that I would just have regular conversations about, you know, just wanting to talk about somebody or what I was mad about or, you know, gossip or whatever. There was such a long time where I just felt like I was sitting around listening to other people because I had nothing that I could say that right. I could contribute. Right. So I wondered for a long time if I would ever even like talk again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do talk now do, and you're very now. funny. So, you know. <laughs> God gave you a new identity, I think, and and you made you a new person. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so I have one last question. Mm -hmm. So you start going to church, you start reading the Bible, and you start changing, you you feel there's things changing. You're not the same person anymore. You can't even say the same things. You You don't even have the same sense of humor. Right. All of that. But how do you go from there to loving Jesus? It's been a journey. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an overnight thing. Um, You know, looking back, of course, I, it feels like it happened so quick, but I know that it didn't. Um, It was just a process of, like I said, I just can't emphasize enough, you know, opening up the Word of God, reading it, um, reading the Psalms Mm. and having those express my emotions and my feelings Mm -hmm. and what I'm going through. and. Just like I said, making making that decision every day, every every chance that I can to choose God's way instead of my mm-hmm. own way, um, to understand that God wants what's best for us, yes, and that the things, the rules, the commandments, mm-hmm. you know, everything that we're given is for our own good. Yeah. So I think that once I began to apply those things to my life. I really got to understand how much Jesus loves us, Mm -hmm. Um, understand the sacrifice, you know, and there's a little bit of, there was a little bit of difficulty there for me to understand, like, what exactly his sacrifice did um, and how that applies to me today, you know, 
Um, but just the more I learned and was able to wrap my mind around it, the more things made sense, the more it all came together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just understood the character of Christ more. Yes. So it's just it's just really falling in love with Jesus Amen. Um, Amen. because of his character, because of the things that he's done. The first memory I have of you is you walking into a Bible study. I think I was teaching that day and saw you your, and your mom. And you definitely looked very different at the time, <laughs> your clothing and just, but you seem very excited to learn, to, to study, to learn more and to study the Bible and to, you know, I think your son was with you mm-hmm. that day too, and I have to say, um, you did a great job. He's a very sweet kid. Mm, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> this is an amazing young man. That is all Jesus right there too. Mm-hmm. I think something else important too that I didn't mention was mm-hmm. that um, it was through the reading of the Word that I understood what love was. You know, I didn't. I didn't know love before. Mm-hmm. I didn't have love before. Um, you know, so to see how much of himself Christ gave for us while we were yet sinners, right? Yes, Christ amen. died for us. So I think understanding his love too. I mean, how could you not respond with love? Well, that's perfect <laughs> to end our conversation today. Thank you so much, Evan. Can I pray for you? Yes, please. Let's do that. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you have done for Evan. Thank you that you created her. Thank you that you decided to give your son, Jesus, to live and die for her and to be raised from the dead and to intercede for her and to come back one day soon. We we trust in your promise to take her to be with you forever and ever and ever. I thank you that you were patient with her, even in the moments that she felt she hated you and she hated your son who became a human being. He who was and is God and humbled himself to become a human, to be an obedient servant, obedient to the point of death and death of the cross. He loved her so much and she, for some time in her life, she was hating him, but he did not give up on her. I thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in her heart, in her mind, in the people around her. I thank you for that woman that prayed for her. I thank you for all the things that you allowed in her life that were not pleasant, but just helped her to see that you were really working and you really wanted her. I thank you that she allowed you to change her and to recreate her into a new person. And I thank you that when I talk to her and when I hear her speak, when I look at her eyes, I can see that she is happy in Jesus, that she loves Jesus, that she responded to love with love. I thank you for your salvation in her life, and I thank you that through her, you are touching and you are going to touch many people. Father, if there is any, anyone listening to these words and watching this video who has not given himself or herself to Jesus Christ, I pray that you may help him or her to give Jesus an opportunity. And for those of us who know that Jesus is good, that have been walking with Him, that have given our hearts to Him, I just pray that you may help us to be inspired and to recommit our lives to you day by day, moment by moment, because you are such a powerful God. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven. We're not going to finish the test. <laughs> We're not going to get to the top again. Uh-huh. And I said, I'm going to finish the test. <laughs>